Hello, this is Pete Jones, and you are listening to episode 112 of the Dragons Are Real podcast. Before I go on to the main subject, I just want to cover a couple of things. First of all, the Breathless RPG Jam is still going. It's got four days left at the time of recording, which is the 25th of June. There's been 52 entries so far into the Breathless Jam, two of which are on my own, which is Cargo and The Hidden. You can pick both my entries up for pay what you want. You can get them from absolute free. If you want to chuck me a couple of bucks, that's up to you, but it's not expected. So check out the Breathless Jam. Secondly, I want to mention the Purple Wormers are back. Yes, myself, Colin and John Allen Large are back. We've done an episode of the Purple Worm, which is available from your normal podcatchers. So we're going to get back together occasionally when we've got time and our schedules allow. Uh, We're not going to set our recording in stone, but it was great fun chatting with uh, John and Colin the other night. So check out the Purple Worm if you enjoyed our last shows. Now on to the main subject. We are going to be covering 2400 by Jason Tocci. So let's get on to what 2400 is. It's a series of micro games which are available together for the princely sum of six dollars. Each one is in a separate setting and covered by the core rules of 2400 which has been released as as an SRD called 24XX. So I will cover the 24XX rules and then what I'm going to do is briefly run through all the uh, different games that are available, uh, the little modules that are available for uh, 2400. So the rules are dead simple. It's a rules like system when you're going to be rolling a dice um, for your skill. Now your skill defaults to a D6 for all relevant skills, but you may have a higher die number, a D8, a D10 or a D12, if you are particularly skilled in something. If you are hindered in any way by injury or circumstance, instead of rolling your normal skill dice, you'll be rolling a D4. Now the results on the dice, whatever dice you roll, is 1 or 2 is a disaster, you suffer the full risk. A 3 and a 4 is a setback, it's a lesser consequence or a partial success. And a 5 plus is a success. Skills get advanced uh, depending on the system, so you go from a uh, low skill, which is normally a D6, to a D8, to a D10, to a D12. There are no hit points, no lives, no health, anything like that. Uh, you take harm, and depending on what to you and uh, your GM agree, is what harm is. It could be taken out of the scene. It could be death. When you're creating characters, you pick a character type, and you usually get some specialities or some special skills. So, for example, if you pick someone who is tough, you might get a D8 in something like hand-to-hand or lifting or something like that. So you get your different skills. Otherwise, if you've got no skill listed, then you just roll a natural D6 for all of the tests that you may want to make. Uh, Each set of the rules has some gear, depending on the system. And then there are a bunch of tables. And these tables typically typically are things like names, uh, descriptions, clothing, gear, that sort of thing. And they're all tied in to each of the module settings. There is usually a, uh, on the last page, there's usually a box which describes the setting in some detail. I say some detail, it's a paragraph, two tops. And there's usually some more tables on the back to help you with things like contacts, locations, settings, all that sort of thing. So you can either roll on them or you can uh, pick for them at your will. Now, each set of the rules is four pages, three pages of rules, and there's an evocative cover on each of the um, modules which yes it does take away from the amount of information Jason can get on there but it does set up nicely each set of uh, rules with the flavor setting so all I'm going to do now is I'm going to run through what you get with a brief description I'm not going into any detail each of them has got little additions here and there um, like sanity for horror rules and uh, some harm rules I've, I've got uh, more details but I'm just going to go th- whisk through them all so you can find out uh, what is available. So first off, we have Inner City Blue- Blues, which is a cyberpunk freelancers in a grainy retro future. So any of your cyberpunk games, then Inner City Blues is the one for you. 
Whatever set of rules or modules you, you get, I also recommend you get the emergency rules. And these emergency rules aren't a setting, they are just more details. Jason goes behind some of his ideas and gives a, a bit more fleshing out for things to consider. Then we have Cosmic Highway. This is space truckers trying to keep their rust bucket flying. So think of uh, shows like Firefly and The Expanse. We have Alt. This is uplift AI and clone operatives in a world without death. Then we have Xenolith. An alien crew faces threats from ancient relics. And this is an homage to Mass Effects. We have Exiles, 20 weirdos surviving in a Xenotech riddled quarantine world. And this is an homage to Ultraviolet uh, Grasslands, the OSR game, so it's on that sort of vibe. Then we have EOS, human marines fight for the common good in the galactic community. And this is the second of Jason's Mass Effect homages. Then we have Project Icarus, rogue psychics flee or fight alien uh, elite agents. Then we have Orbital Decay, a space horror scenario generator. And this is for games like uh, Mothership, Alien, Horror in Space, then Orbital Decay should be on your list. Then we have Tempest Did You Kit. This is a timeline bending mashup setting for all 24xx games. So this way you can mash all your different scenarios and modules up into one setting. Then we have the Venusian Job, a casino heist above the clouds on another world. Yes, it's an Ocean's Elevens type game. Then we have a zone where you're exploring an area where known science no longer applies in a sort of a post-apocalyptic setting. Then we have Codebreakers. This is reality hackers elude demons to escape the simulation. Yes, you've guessed it. It's the Matrix. Then we have Data Loss. Merry corrupted clones collect souls on a ruined world. Yes, if you know the Souls uh, video game, this is a Souls-like RPG. Then we have Hubs and Gardens. Community responders on an idyllic space station. Think of the old Ringworld game, and with the art, yeah, you can't go wrong there. Then we have Resistors. Activist hackers take on corpse in a cyberpunk dystopia. This is Leverage with Magic. Then we have Zot. Settlers adapt to a world littered with unstable alien devices. So this is ideal for playing um, settings like the Ninth World and Numenera. The odd one out is 2400 Legends, which is lo-fi high fantasy. A world of classic high fantasy presided over by Duos. So uh, if you want to play a fantasy setting using the 24 rules, then this is your setting. And the final one in the collection is Battle Moon, a combat rules primer and battle royal one shot in space. So that is all you get and for six dollars that is an awful lot of stuff you get in there for $6. Loads of sets of rules there. And as I said, you can mix and match them together. They are very rules light, but you can print them out. Uh, take it along to your gaming club. And if something uh, has gone wrong at night and nobody's got a game, you can just whisk one of these out and you're up and running in seconds. Really nice, easy dice mechanic. And it's more about the store that we tell you. So for $6, I highly recommend 2400. There's lots of other hacks out there as well, which you can link to from the uh, main page. And I'll leave, a, I'll leave a, it's in the show notes where you can pick up 2400 and 24XX the SRD. So that is my review of 2400. Thanks all for listening. And I'll catch you all on the flip side.